morning everyone welcome to Kelly's creative dream studios and this was supposed to be up and running already but I woke up at four o'clock this morning and realized that I had done the video but I hadn't uploaded it so I went to upload it and instead I deleted it from my camera so here I am on Friday morning having been a day ahead thinking I had today off I'm back doing a recording this morning <laughs> I think our snow has stopped Oh, excuse me while I take a drink of tea. We didn't get as much of the snow as a lot of people, but we got pretty much what was forecasted. I think I've got somewhere between four and five inches out there. So, it'll look pretty if the sun comes up this morning. I'll put on my boots and I'll go wade and take some pictures because I love my early morning snowfalls. Okay, so today we are talking about... Uh, hang on, let me get this hair out of my way. Um, we're talking about stamping on fabric and on velvet, but not with inks or paints. We're doing it with our iron. So, a um, couple, well, actually, we're doing one of them with the iron. One of them we're stamping with bleach. Now, here are a couple of samples that I did. This was done on the gold velvet. With the iron this one was done with the iron and because it's darker it didn't come out quite as stark but it'll be a nice subtle addition to um, maybe the front of a pocket or part of a tag so that one and then this one is the stamping with bleach now this one I got a little heavy-handed with the um, Grecian wreath and not quite as heavy as I should have <laughs> with the Irish knot. So we're going to come back and play with those this morning. What I can tell you is you cannot stamp on velvet with the bleach, and here's why. Velvet, even though you might think of it as being fabric and being porous, velvet is not a porous fabric. If you pour water onto here, it's going to sit on the top for a little bit before it sinks in. So therefore, it is not good for stamping with. You're going to need a calico, broadcloth, cotton kind of stuff. I also tried stamping on satin yesterday, and that did not work. And I think for the same reason. It has a built-in sheen, and anything that you pour on there is just going to pool before it saturates. So let's start with the bleach one, because I have the bleach here ready to go. And I have this pretty hot pink broadcloth to put that string in my coffee cup okay and all I've done is I've taken some dried up baby wipes and put them in um, some kind of a receptacle you can put them in a plastic uh, like lunch meat keeper that you get at the grocery store you can put them in a Stampin' Up case I'm using a tray from my uh, project life that I got from Maddie and so we're just going to take we're just going to take our stamp and I've coated this in with bleach. Now you don't want to, whoops, did I take and put it away already? I must have. You don't want to oversaturate this because if you do, then you're going to get a pooling. And I think that's what happened here on the Grecian wreath. I had too much um, bleach in here. And when I put the stamp in there, it kind of pooled around in the center. So what did I do with the Grecian wreath? Here it is. Let's do it again. See, it's got more of a, not a lot of detail, more flush, and you're just going to stamp in there and get the bleach onto your stamp. Let's see how I've got some pooling there. I want to try and get rid of that. And then we're just going to stamp straight down. Just like if you were stamping with anything else, you want to go straight down and straight up. And it'll take it a minute. The bleach has to evaporate and soak into the fabric. It showed up better on the dark one. Let's have to see what happens if we flip it over and heat it with the heat, with the iron. Doesn't come through quite as much on that hot. Let's try the Grecian re or try the Celtic knot. Funny thing yesterday, I found out that all this, all my life I was told that my mother was Irish. My mother was Czech German. Technically, she was, her, her roots were from the Czech Republic, which became part of um, Germany. I 
Now I want to show up great on the hot pink. So I've got another piece of the dark here and let's see what happens when we do it. As you can see, it really did show up. Why it's not wanting to play nice this morning, I have no clue. But we really want to push it in there and give that a chance to really saturate into the fabric. Oh, sun's coming up. I'll have to take pictures of our snow and show Bob. He had about a foot in Chicago. It does work stamping with bleach, but I can tell you it works better on cardstock. Check that one out. And let's resaturate that Grecian wreath. See, as it starts, it's slowly starting to come out. The longer it sets, the more it'll become apparent. Now, when you stamp with bleach, you can see that one coming out as it dries. When you stamp with bleach, you want to make sure to clean your stamps really, really well and recondition them. And I recommend, if you have it, using some kind of a stamp scrubber and a stamp cleaner. Because this has a built-in conditioner that will recondition your rubber stamps. And you should always recondition your rubber stamps regardless of what you stamp with because over time the rubber is going to dry and crack now if you don't have a stamp cleaner use a baby wipe preferably one that has lanolin in it and that will recondition your stamps as well and you can see how that's coming out okay now for the fun one let's talk about this stamping on velvet shall we go back down here Oh, I wasn't planning on redoing this video this morning. I was planning on the morning off with coffee with my sister. Okay, and I did everything except cut out a couple of pieces of the velvet. But I have it handy, so give me a second here. Also have a little piece of information. Now, let's see if I have a piece of that gold cut out. It doesn't appear as if I do. So let's cut a piece of this gold. Let's cut a piece of this gold out. Hopefully I can get a piece, get my scissors to cut a piece here. Make sure I've got a piece big enough for the stamp image. this back where it belongs okay stamping on velvet now there are different types of velvet I found out and without really knowing what the fabric content is of these scraps that I have I had to test run them and this black would not take the stamp it has for some reason it well and it's a different weight it's not as flimsy it's a little more firm but it would not take take a stamped image. So that one didn't work. And I can't remember from the Carol Duvall show if it was about whether it had a poly content or not that made the difference. So let's take and cut a piece of this off. And I think I can let's just get rid of that. My goal is to work on my February album all this weekend. I have several videos planned to coordinate with what I'm doing on the album. So I'm going to show you on this one just so you know the difference. Oh, crumb. Hang on. I need water. Luck would have it. I have a Tim Holtz bottle hanging here with water on it. That's always helpful. Okay, so let's start with this one because it has good definitive lines and all you're going to do is put your stamp face up put your fabric face down your velvet to the stamp and then you're going to hit it really good with water and you're going to want your iron setting on 
like a rayon cotton poly uh, setting. I have mine set for a medium heat. And you want to make sure it's good and hot. So give it plenty of time to heat up. Because then you're going to go straight down on your stamp, on your fabric, and just set it there. You, you heard the water hiss as it started to dry it out. And that's going to take the, the moisture out of the fabric and let you leave that impression in the bottom. Now, as I said, this one didn't work yesterday during the filming, and in a minute I think I can explain why. But let's lift this up. You can see a ghost of it on the black, but not real stark. See that? Now, there is a difference in the texture between this velvet and this velvet. This velvet has a little bit... Think of it, think of it as like a low-pile carpet to something that has more of a, more of a uh, texture. So more like a Berber, uh, Berber carpet to something that has a little bit more nap, a little bit more loop. It's softer in texture than this is. Okay, so now let's do it with the gold. And I loved this lace image. I don't know where it came from. I just know that I love it. And we're going to do the same thing. Stamp side up. Fabric side down. Hit it good with the water. Get it good and moisture. Whoops. The bottle is not wanting to squeeze this morning. There we go. And this piece of cardstock is not going to be good for <laughs> doing photos anymore. And you want to make sure that you go straight down and straight up. If you move your iron, you're going to smear the image. You're going to distort your image. So just straight down, straight up. Do to about a count of 10 or 15 after you've not heard the hiss anymore. And then straight up. See that one I could have left a little bit longer. It also depends on the nap, which direction the nap is going on your fabric. Okay? And then let's do one more with the brown. Let's cut this border off here. I can't remember. I don't think I did the Grecian wreath. I didn't like the way it's stamped. But let's give it a shot. Get some of our water up here. But I don't think it's going to show up because it doesn't have the definitive lines that the other two have. So you can really see the definitive lines in this stamp and in this one. But you can't in this one. But we're going to go ahead and try this one anyway just because we can. So I'm going to lay my fabric down, and I think my water bottle is running low, that's why it's not wanting to spray. So let me hold it up and spray. That's better. Get that good and saturated. Squirt where I had my thumb. Okay. Listen for the hiss. I'm still seeing the steam rise, even though I'm not hearing the hiss anymore. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The other thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you go to the widest part of your iron so that you get complete coverage on your stamped image. And there we go. And that's all there is to stamping on velvet. Um, stamping with bleach obviously works better on cardstock, but it's not completely, depending on what you're stamping on and how much bleach you impress, it's just going to be a, a trial and error thing. So that is it for my tutorial today. Remember, I do not have a tutorial tomorrow. I'm not doing shop Saturday tomorrow. I'm focusing on getting these journals done and out of off the table and out of the way. So 
so that I can start getting back to the shop and getting other things cleaned up. Um, I will be back here stamping up Sunday. We are doing a paper pumpkin unboxing called Kisses and Hugs. It's our January kit. And it is going to be all about Valentine cards. So I'll help you come back and join me. In the, remember, in the meantime, remember to like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to grab coffee. Creative blessings.